Joining me now is Michael Shank. He is Director of Engagement at Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance. He's also an adjunct professor of sustainable development at NYU. Thank you so much for joining our program. Thanks, Francis, for having me. We mentioned a, a, a statistic earlier about every year that we produce two billion tons of solid waste. So to put this in perspective, how big of a problem is waste uh, in China? Well, waste was already a problem pre-COVID, and then COVID made it all worse, which is what compelled the UN to have this International Day of Zero Waste, as you mentioned. So happy International Day of Zero Waste. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is calling for a war on garbage, saying that we're trashing our only home. So pre-COVID, we were headed towards a disastrous, more plastic in the ocean than fish in the coming decades, which is problematic because a lot of people, a lot of coastal cities get their protein from marine life that is now ingesting that plastic, which is getting into our body. So pre-COVID, it was a problem. But now, post-COVID, because we scaled up with single-use plastics, we scaled up with online deliveries, we scaled up with packaging, so now it's even a worse problem. So cities around the world, including in China, are thankfully committing to zero waste because that's the kind of movement we need to build now. Well, let's talk about China's efforts to tackle the problem. Uh, one of its plans is to build 100 so-called zero-waste cities by 2025. That's just around the corner, really. So how innovative is this concept, and how do you think that, that will help alleviate this problem? So what's beneficial about a 100-city movement is that it builds a movement. It builds a culture of zero waste. What's beneficial about a 2025 goal versus a 2050 goal or a 2040 goal is that it is around the corner. So there is this urgency. There is this near-term goal setting that's good. I think what's innovative in this space, because you asked that question, is some of the cities, like Shanghai, are thinking about how to make the behavior change more beneficial to the public. Because yes, laws will, well, laws will compel the public to do what's right here and to sort appropriately and accordingly their waste, dry, wet, recyclable, toxic, et cetera. But we really have to make it fun for people. It needs to be fun. It needs to be easy. There needs to be economic incentives, paying more to pollute, earning more to recycle. And so how do we make the, the waste distribution process, the prevention process, so it doesn't end up on our streets, so it doesn't end up in our waterways, so it doesn't end up in our oceans, how do we make that bit, that behavior change, more fun, whether it's games, whether it's virtual reality, whether it's songs? I, I know cities are exploring all of this. So on the behavior change front, that needs to be explored. And we need to make reusables easy and fun too, so that rather than that single-use plastic, rather than that online delivery, what are we pursuing instead that's more permanent, that's more reusable, that's more enjoyable? And that bit is the nut to crack in terms of how do we make that fun for people? Yeah, it is all about changing mindsets, isn't it? And uh, I read an article, which interestingly enough, that in Shanghai, they are, are targeting young people by using video games to introduce them to this concept of recycling. It's, it's really interesting, and, and particularly young people, they're trying to start them out early. Yeah, so again, this goes to the movement, this goes to building a culture, building norms around waste so that we think differently about disposing of something so easily. I mean, it's it's a real efficiency loss to waste all the resources that we've produced. We extracted those resources, we've created that plastic for a, a plastic bottle of water, for example, and then we dispose of it so quickly, letting go of that opportunity to capture and recover those resources that we once extracted. So. In addition to behavior change, there's some systems change things that we can think about, like a global carbon tax, because most plastic comes from fossil fuels. So new plastic is so cheap for businesses to use. It's cheap because there's no price on carbon. There's really no global carbon tax that would incentivize business to do differently. Thankfully, there's a global plastics treaty that's being talked about. It's now two years in the making. It's an iterative process. Hopefully, fossil fuel companies won't water it down too much. But that looks at plastic and waste from a life cycle perspective, from extraction to disposal, making sure in a circular economy, we're making use of all those resources and we never let them go to waste. Because again, that's wasted resource, that's wasted money, that's wasted economic opportunity. Big problem that requires a lot of, uh, a lot of solutions. Michael Shank with Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance. Thank you so much, Michael. Thanks for having me.